Hi, thanks for being a part of our study today. Tony and I have had a really busy day, so she's going to be absent today. You might notice my background here. This was painted for me by preacher Bill McCormick. He gave that to me a couple years ago, and I display it proudly in my basement. I thought it would be fun to put it as a background today. We're also going to look at uh, chapter 12, and I'm going to read from uh, the good news for modern man in this passage and just talk about it. So let's begin. Chapter 12. Now concerning what you wrote about the gifts from the Holy Spirit, they had exchanged letters. We're hearing what Paul's saying to them. I want you to know the truth about them, my friends. You know that while you were still heathen, you were led astray in many ways to worship lifeless idols. And that's true. An idol is a substitute for God. Now they worshiped in pagan temples. We have worshiped in a multitude of ways. The bottom line for a idol is it substitutes something we devote for something other than God. He said, I want you to know that no one who is led by God's spirit can say a curse on Jesus and no one can confess Jesus is Lord without being guided by the spirit. Probably in the pagan temples, there were people who would curse Jesus in those pagan temples. On the other hand, in the church, people led by the spirit would say Jesus is Lord. With that in mind, let's talk about spiritual gifts. He says there are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same spirit gives them. There are different ways of serving, but the same Lord. There are different abilities to perform service, but the same God gives ability to all for their particular service. Now, did you hear that? Spirit, Lord being Jesus, and God being God the Father. The Bible never uses the word Trinity, but the concept of the Trinity pops up all over the Bible. So here in just a couple of verses, you have the Holy Spirit, you have the Lord Jesus, and you have the Father God all together. Now, can you imagine God having an argument? Can you imagine the Son and the Spirit teaming up on God the Father or some other combination? No, I absolutely not. And Paul is saying to the church, if God is united, we need to be united too. So let's, let's see how it works out. Uh, the Spirit's presence is shown in some way in each person for the good of all. The Holy Spirit lives his life out from us. And every person who has the Spirit in them, and if you don't have the Spirit in you, you don't belong to God. So every one of us have the Spirit working through us for the common good. What is he doing? He is showing his work. Now, I'm going to say it over and over again. If the Spirit's doing it, I can't take credit for it. I have to give him glory. I can't be like somewhere in Corinth, puffed up with pride. Look what I've done. Look what I've said. Look how I've acted. I can't do that because it's the Spirit who is doing the work. The Spirit gives one person a message full of wisdom, while another person, the Spirit gives a message full of knowledge. What's interesting, in the pagan temples, after they had the meal, they would go drink wine, and then they would have a wisdom teacher who is called a sophist. That comes from the Greek word sophia, where we get the word wisdom. It's interesting that in chapter 11, we've looked at a communal meal. We talked about it. Paul wrote about some people getting drunk, which is crazy. And now we have him talking about, oh no, don't come and be that wisdom teacher. So there was probably a problem in Corinth about people who said, I am wise and you should listen to me and I should have status because after all, I'm wise. Now, what is the difference between a with gift of wisdom and a gift of knowledge. I don't know, and I really don't think it matters. Now, that won't get me many books written on spiritual gifts. I won't get many books writing. But nevertheless, what really matters is that we are controlled and led by the Spirit, and he can have his freedom to build up the church and to extend the kingdom of God. Let's keep reading. One of the same Spirit, notice how he talks about unity. One of the same Spirit gives faith to one person, and to another person, it gives the power to heal. Oh, so when we see people getting healed by the power of God, we do what? We give him glory. We don't give the person who healed them glory, do we? No, 
They're just a tool. They're an instrument. All right? Uh, the Spirit gives one person the power to work miracles, another the gift of speaking God's message, to another the ability to tell the difference between gifts that come from the Spirit and that those don't. To some he gives the ability to speak in tongues, to another he gives the ability to explain what's been said. So that's, I just really read quickly through a number of gifts, and praise God for those gifts. The Spirit of God works through people and does things that we can observe and say, thank you, God. So at Maywood Baptist Church, where I go, uh, my faith is increased because I've seen the miracles of transformed lives. I've seen people who didn't have a single chance of making it, and they not only make it, they excel. That builds my faith. I have friends in the Catholic and in the Episcopal Church. When the charismatic renewal came through those churches, uh, that's the speaking in tongues for the primary uh, part. Uh, they said what the benefit that brought to their church was it brought a personal relationship with God. What is the deal behind all of these things? The deal is God is at work. He is helping us to have faith in him, to walk with him, to be built up, and to extend his kingdom. It is not, N-O-T, not about the person who has the experience, and they can then say, hey, look at me, but rather it's all about God. So then he comes down and he says, but it is one and the same spirit who does all of this as he wishes, and he gives a different gift to each person. Now, if you look carefully at verse 7 and verse 11, they're like bookends, or they're like a frame on Bill's picture back there. And whenever you find a frame uh, or bookends like this in Scripture, get a red, red flag waving. This is an important point. What's the important point? The important point is this. God is the one who gets glory. We humbly submit to him. We let him work through us. We don't care about our status or our reputation. We do care about building up the church and extending God's kingdom. That's the key thought here. I pray that that helps you. And I know there's a lot of teaching about spiritual gifts, but I believe with all my heart, this is the core of these verses. Try it out. God bless you. Thanks. See you tomorrow. Have a great day.